Embarrass me in front of my friends, IG. Come on now. All right. Hi, everyone. We are day late and a dollar short, but we here. <laughs> and don't worry, as time um, goes on, we will be, um, we're adding, we're going to be doing adding more structure to this show. Hi, everybody. Come on in. Thank you guys for showing up. We love you. We really do. All right, I'm just trying to put pin something. How is everybody doing? I know it's, IG is letting you guys know that we're about to um, get going. Just waiting for um, decks to pop up. Hi, everybody. Thank you for pulling up on us. <laughs> you guys are amazing. All right, one second. One second, I'm just waiting for Dex. Well, Dex is here. I'm sorry. I'm old. I'm trying to uh, put something up. Okay. I want to pin this comment. All right, let me just bring Dex on. Hi. And have a seat. Come on in. Get your snacks. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank y'all so much for pulling up on us. We appreciate it. <laughs> Hi, Dexter. Hey. How are you? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> you look it. You look moisturized. Do I really? I, I start using a new moisturizer. How are you using Fenty? You want a Fenty train? No, I think that might be too expensive. Well, listen, you got you got to pay money to keep a good. You don't want to be spoiled milk, <laughs> but I, using I did start using a new toothpaste too, which what? Yeah, you should keep a baby. Go uh, ahead. How large in? Go ahead. This is my go-to toothpaste person. Like I start using new ones. You know, Burt's Bees who makes the chapstick. Yes. They make a um, they make a a, a toothpaste now. Well, they probably always, but I just saw it recently. I'm like, oh, this is cool. I'll try that. Is it that carbon type? Hi, everybody checking in. Trey, my love, how are you? Trey, just be cooking away. Trey, don't get mad. Don't be surprised when um. I take a ride down I ninety five, and be like, "Where the plate?" <laughs> but you, like, you're glowing today. You look great today. Oh well, thank you, Dexter. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to stay moisturized. I'm trying to mind my biz to an extent. Mind my business for the most part. <laughs> um, hydrated. My workouts are giving me peace. I took a mental health day today from the job it was needed so yeah and it was so funny because you know what you know normally you when you take off you're like um all right you still find yourself being connected and it's like because the emails will pile okay well you don't do that all right so for me i like to stay somewhat connected like i'll pop in occasionally why would you do that because it's going to make it worse on me so my job where I am, I'm the only one who does my job. Yeah, but you're so, the only one who does it tomorrow, too. Huh? You're going to be the only one who does it tomorrow, too. That's true, but I don't like to come back to a thousand emails and a thousand things to do. Even in your therapist, you have to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be like that, where uh -huh. it never truly taken off. Like, I'm, To be honest with you, the first time I ever actually did it was in Mexico. Because, like... Yeah. Always like I always need to be connected and working and knowing like what's going on. But when I went to Mexico, I'm like, I don't have time for like work. Plus I know I'm my way out. I don't have time for work or whatever. And like honestly told you, like the work's gonna be there when you get back. Like it sucks to have to come back to a bunch of emails and stuff. But like yeah. it's silly to take this day off to do to take care of yourself and then I'm worried about not coming back to a bunch of emails. So I'm gonna do a bunch of yeah. like it's like you're defeating your purpose of taking a day. Listen, no, because I need to. I need this tranquility to to go over in tomorrow morning. So at least if I can get the emails down, because that gives me anxiety to show up and I have like, especially if you take a week off. No. Even in Mexico, I was like, uh, -uh we're going to delete the trash because I just can't. I can't come back to that. That's just me. But um, I guess we can get into the show a little bit. And Trey, I saw you comment and you said your heart just sank because she saw the pen comment. 
And yes, one of our amazing commenters. Um, he was like really with us from the beginning, started following us through uh, doing our features with Patty Jackson. And he came over here and Ralph was just an amazing spirit. Like he always had something to contribute to the conversation. Um, always like, even when we were trying to find a name for the show, like he was in it with us. We celebrated Dexter's birthday last year and, and Ralph was one of the ones he had his cake ready, his ice cream. Like he was just, it's hard to find, I look at him like he was a friend, like he is a friend of ours. I think the biggest portion of it is this, like, like most people here, like we don't know each other personally. No each other through this show honestly through social media through instagram and stuff and like toy and i feel like connections with so many people that we're talking yeah. to we always feel these connections and like ralph was one of those people that like if we were following him on social media and it's like we know his life like he you know he mm -hmm. posted that he was he was in the hospital for a bit and like we're like oh i hope everything like works out and you're praying for him and you're actually praying for people that you've never met before and like yeah type of like sadness when there's a person who you don't necessarily know know like that but like mm -hmm. feel their presence and i feel like we have yeah. some, like community of people and that like it just kind of it just sucks you know but yeah, it really does suck i mean just like you said we both had conversations with him in the damn um in the in the dms like right before me and him were in the comments and he posted him. He had to get surgery. He had a couple of brain tumors. First surgery, super successful. Um, second surgery was a success. And me and him were going back and forth like, you better, your black ass better let me know when you get home so I can pull up on you and visit. And we had plans to do that. But Dexter, after that, like me and you, because I, when I told you, I was like, yo, what, you were like, I noticed I hadn't seen him. And I know for me, it had been like a couple of weeks. And I was like, yo, what the hell? So I slid in his DMs. I'm like, where the hell you been at, Ralph? In that moment, something said, go to his page. And then I saw the rest in pieces. Um, that was tough. And then the next day, I was fortunate enough to speak to his mother. I got happy because... <laughs> I saw a phone call come through from him on on here. And I was like, hold up, wait a minute. It was his mother. We got a chance to speak. Um, I thought it might have been from complications from his surgery, but it was not. Um, it happened not too long after surgery. He passed away on Wednesday from a heart attack, and he was set to come home on that Friday. So just please, guys, just pray for his family. Keep them in prayer. His mother is an amazing person. I was like, well... I never got a chance to sit with your son and we were supposed to do that, but I would love the opportunity to sit with you. So we're going to make that happen in, in the coming weeks. So just, and then this was a tough one. And just be intentional about, you know, like your relationships with people, like just to share yeah. you have, because you just never know. You really never yes. know. And you know, if somebody is constantly on your mind, usually there's a reason for that. Just check in, like, because even if, I mean, even with all this stuff with mental health, you never know what somebody is going through. Yeah. So sometimes it just, and it, this, this is why I really felt bad, um, because I think it was like Saturday or Friday before I found out, and he was on my mind heavy, and I was like, yo, what the, where has he been? I said, I got to reach out to Ralph. I wish I had done that on Friday, because at least... I would have told you and we could have made it to the funeral. His mother had a whole uh, virtual option. But I said, damn. But just like Dexter said, just please, just pray. Check in on your loved ones. No, tomorrow is not promised to any of us in any way, shape, or form. Um, Marjan, oh, oh I'll probably, yeah, I'll see. I might. I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm always weird about stuff like that. But one thing, but, he always had us laughing. Like, he was, Ralph was hilarious. He's probably one of the funniest people I've never met. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> with us, you know, we we, we want to pay him his respects because it's necessary for us to do. But we also want you guys to know that we're going to laugh and we're going to have a good time tonight. Yeah. Probably up there enjoying some Assad's cooking and, like, laughing. <laughs> he was he is up there screaming watching this now. <laughs> And that's the thing. That's why when this show was dedicated to him, we're going to have fun. Ralph was a fun dude, and that's what we're going to do. 
Um, yeah, March, and I'll look into that. I'll be, I'll ask his mother out of respect. And then I'm one of those people, I need to know if there's a clear thing you want us to post. Like, I'm not just going to do anything. Um, but yeah, we are back. We took a week off. We had to do some regrouping. We have some big things coming up. Um, we are going to work on getting a bit more um, organized as far as like being committed. And if we are, day will be Monday, but working on an alternate day schedule. Um, so this thing is come. This thing of ours is coming together. <laughs> What's going on with you? And it's like. I I we're fine. It's just that we have to, like, it's been so busy. The beginning of the year is always super busy. Yes. And I'm like, yo, what the hell is going on? I feel like it's busier this year, though, than it has been in past. But maybe because we booked and busy. Booked and busy. Things have popped, and we are definitely going to do a pie. It is coming. That is coming. That is definitely coming. So more things we to stay, just stay tuned. I, you know, I normally hate doing that because it's a good thing we got ours going because. But it's you not, know, usually that's the kiss of death. Like to happen, you know. Y'all know I don't do a coming soon. I hate that. I hate it. <laughs> that is the kiss of death to any, usually anybody's project, any type of podcast, anything you're going to do. You ain't got even an episode out yet, and you talking about coming soon. I I'm a firm believer in that, saying that I know plenty of people, Toy's friends, who say coming soon, and like we never see it. It's hot. The boys. Are Where hot. is it? hot in these streets. We've been waiting on that for two years now, right? This was, wasn't this before pandemic too? Way, be Rona? way before. Where is it? But anyway, happy Black History Month, Toy. Like, what's, what What do we got on the, on the docket today? On the docket? It's so funny. Well, okay, since we're somewhat, let's get into some local stuff. Happy Black History, everybody. Um, what is the, oh, did you see? I did you see recently <laughs> the crime ring of the people robbing uh, younger, younger you robbing local fast food chains? They had a whole sting operation going on. And um, as of, I think the last I heard, they've been robbing at gunpoint, <laughs> robbing and burglaring um, McDonald's, Burger King and Popeye's. Like, um, it's been, you, uh, like they're robbing, the, uh, they're robbing them for money. Yeah. I'm sure they might ask for a couple burgers or something to eat because while you're there, you might as well pick something up and um, enjoy yourself. But yeah, it's a whole um, it's a whole ring going on. Y'all need to get a job. I wonder if this will stop once the city. Did you hear that thing um, that there? It's an experimental thing. It's happened in other cities as well. But to try to, I guess, spur the economy, people who make under a certain amount will be given cash if i don't know if it's cash i'm sure the governor you know uncle sam you're gonna find some way to keep to get tabs on something but they're trying to give these people um cash assistance but no top like ties attached like i don't know if they can go ahead and pay taxes on it i don't know i don't know what this if this is really going to accomplish anything here philly is a rare breed but they said that this program has worked in other cities so you no know, the thing that would make me a little iffy about that is if you are doing that you're giving people money the issue is that people are poor right so if people yes. are poor and they don't have money or whatever when you give both of us you're going to give both of us money one of us already has more than the other person has so if you're giving both money and one of us has more than the other person has yes i have something but i need and i want more so then mm -hmm. i rob the next person and i think that's the reason why we're seeing so many robberies that are happening and even like a fast food restaurant like to me that's desperation like you go into like you know like a bank to me feels like i want to take a lot of money and i want to win yes. really rob something and, and take a lot of money fast food restaurants like you taking that it's not like you're getting ten thousand dollars in a day like you're not uh -huh. making much money so it's just kind of like they just need a quick dollar in their pocket so that's scary yeah, it's 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 crazy because and that like why are you risking your life to be behind bars? Look, this is not good to say, but you're risking your life to be a bar, bar, go behind bars and because you rob at McDonald's if you don't get to the bank. 
Yeah, but even with that, though, there are people who are working at McDonald's now who are, like, probably afraid to go to work. And it's this thing where we keep saying, like, people, nobody wants to work, nobody wants to work. No, I don't want to be out in public where there's carjacking, carjackings happening every single day. And I can't even work a nine-to-five job at McDonald's without being concerned that somebody's going to come in there with a gun. Like, this is insane to me. Well, remember, this wasn't local, but um, this was, I think it was last week. The one of the girls, I think she was a Burger King worker, a teenage girl, too was in on a ring of setting up this robbery, was in on it, and the girl ended up losing her damn life. Was it worth it? Because the people who she, I guess the guy's gun went off accidentally or something and killed her in the drive-thru. Oh, wow. This got to stop. There, there are better ways to make money out here. It's not worth it. Like, all these places hiring, we see it. Right now, people paying, and at this point, people need people. If you need money, the time is now to get out there and get you a job because it's just not worth it. And then for the people who you try to get in on the scams, like, okay, I mean, if you've worked retail at all, you know, I don't, well, you worked at McDonald's before, but the small jobs, retails, people will try to test you when it comes to stuff like that. And no, no, please don't be that person. I really feel bad that this young girl lost her life because, but. I think this message needs to be spread more. You don't get out there and do dumb shit like this. Um, and then let me, oh, wait, did you see? Uh, oh, it was something else local I wanted to talk about. But um, right before we went on, there was a story that uh, popped up that over in Langhorn, if you're in the Langhorn area, I think our buddy Brandon is in the Langhorn area, correct? I don't think so. No, Langhorn. No, Langhorn is like far, far. Up. Langhorn is like closer to like Neshaminy. Okay, yes. So, in case you guys might see a dog that looks kind of big out there, it's probably not a dog. It's a coyote. So, they, huh? That's typical for that area, though. Like Langhorn is like. Okay, so if it's typical, is it a slow news day? All this shit going on because I'm like, like not typical. Like you would see that often, but like. Langhorn is like one of those places where it's like okay. Oxford Valley Mall is up there, like Oxford Valley. Yeah. Mall. So it's kind of like I don't know the proper word to use it without being offensive. But the people, the type of people who live in Langhorn are kind of country. I'll put it that way. They're like okay, rural area. I'll, I'll say that. Okay, so this is this is normal then. Aren't too far from Langhorn. I'll put it that way too. Like it's just, okay. Like, like Langhorn is definitely not one of those places that is like upper echelon. Like it's very, mm -hmm. a lot of businesses around there. So a lot of people go and they work there, but they don't live there. The people who live there okay. probably have coyotes in their house. They think that's like a normal pet type of thing. So why is this on my news tonight? Like, cause I'm like, listen, we lived in Cali and the coyotes used to either chase or walk us home, whichever perspective you want to look at it. They used to chase us home from the damn movies at night. And my mom, my mom, as little as her stature is, this woman is such a damn G. Because I will never forget us walking home and our instincts at that time, and this was just one of the few times, but the first time, because we were new to Cali and we had never seen this shit before. <laughs> so my mom, we sit here about to go, she says, stop. <laughs> what you mean stop? The coyotes don't move. <laughs> so people say like they can smell fear and if you react they react I, I yeah like like I, I grew up in mississippi so being in mississippi if you see a dog they'd be like stand still the dog's not gonna bother you and i'm like he, he's gonna kill me so like, <laughs> i'm never the type of person that's gonna stay still when i and an animal i just can't do it <laughs> I don't know, but I, we were all young and like babies or teenagers at that time. But my brother Randy started crying. Oh, no. <laughs> but whenever she said, I, I don't understand how she held her composure because I swear this woman did not shake or anything. And before we know it, we kept walking, but was quiet, didn't show fear. And them coyotes let us go home. But I was like, this is not the news in Cali. Why make the news here? <laughs> it was more than one coyote? Yes. Some, cat, some coyotes like you said you on our property. Who told you to put your little military base on here? Have you ever seen the movie? This is one of my favorite movies. So, have you ever seen the movie Look Who's Talking Now with the dogs? One of my faves ever. Yes. 
Remember he had to fight the coyotes? Yes! <laughs> yes! What was his name? No, I'm thinking of Chance in um, Homeward Bound. I don't, do you know that movie? Yeah, but his name was Rocks because that's what he left in the box. Yes, okay. <laughs> Thank you, that's go ahead. Um, she said, what E.C. McLean said, I am too fat to run. I would have, I would have to fight. But this is the thing, though. Like, when you, when you get in that mode of, like, an animal about to chase you, the weight doesn't matter. Like, it, it doesn't. doesn't. You, you find the strength that you didn't, you Sh can't hurt the next day. But you find yep. strength in your body that it's like, I got to save my life. <laughs> I got to <laughs> I got to put it's so my cousin Crystal said, you know Kelly, I mean, and my mom uh, has a connection with animals. She definitely does. But no, you're right about that. That, that what is it, flight or fright? That shit is real. <laughs> I, um, well, personal story, we were, um, you know, I don't, and you, you saw it in, in, uh, in, in Dexaco. I don't fuck in, I don't fuck around in open water. Like, I, I just don't do it. it. It's scary to me. There's things down there that we don't, we sit here trying to worry about what the fuck is going on in space with, with Trump SpaceX or whatever. We don't even know what's at the, the deepest parts of the ocean. How about we work on what's going on here? The aliens probably down there having a good fucking time. But because of that, huh? I, I, I'm actually not a fan of, um, of water either. Like, I don't okay. like 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 for me, a I, I pool like all day long. But like if it's like the ocean or something, like I'm, I'm complaining because it's like I could die. <laughs> Thank you, yo! I swear that was my first and last jet ski ride. I was on the back. The water was super fucking choppy. I was like, guy was like, you're gonna be okay. I promise. I promise. Bitch, I fell off that my jet ski twice. This was before I was working out, Dexter. I don't know where this upper body strength came from because prior to working out, I had little to nothing. Like some, but nothing did really. I know you when this happened? Huh? Did I did I know you when this happened? I'm just No, you weren't. Okay, I don't I'm know. But with a timeline because I can think of something that may have saved you when you fell off the jet skis. Tell me, what what's what is your um your I don't want to say diagnosis, but what's your assumption? I didn't know you. That means I'm correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what is it? Uh, you know, some of us just have built-in flotation devices and some of us don't. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this was during... I'm pretty... No, this was during the flotation device. But that shit, motherfucker... Don't nothing flow on that shit. That shit is like rocks. <laughs> Bring you right the fuck down. <laughs> Ain't nothing flowing about that shit, literally. <laughs> but, you know, people keep saying they saw Jaws, and that's and that's the scary part. Like, it mentally, I can't, I fell off twice, boom, we were far out. Boy, I said, take me the fuck back, because this, this ain't for me. I'm not supposed to be out here. <laughs> the water getting in my mouth and in my nose. Like, when that happens, I'm done. I can't do it. Even if I'm in a swimming pool, and I feel that water, like, kind of, like, seeping in, I'm like, I'm done. I'm about to die. I can't mm -hmm. But speaking of, uh, you talk about Langhorn. If you drive a little bit down the street from Langhorn, there has been Salem. And Ben Salem is national news. Ben Salem is making national news because I think it was Friday, there was a melee at the Golden Corral. Y'all, they got the fighting at the Golden Corral. And melee. There's stories coming out about it. And apparently, the fight happened because the Golden Corral ran out of stakes. Now, I saw a video of a guy talking about it. He said, I had a a well done, no, I had a medium, medium well steak. And yes. Done, but the people who had well done, like, you know, it was. And who, who are these people? Who would the people mostly be? Because who order they steaks like that? Well done. Uh -huh. I don't know. Don't, I, don't everybody like well done steaks? You. You. You are the cousins. <laughs> <laughs> you the cousins. <laughs> Uh, it don't take long for my steak. They just put it in the thing, flip it over a couple of times, and then put it on the table. But <laughs> yeah, but guys, they were in there throwing chairs, throwing high chairs. Like Golden Corral is like a buffet style restaurant where families go to eat. And I think they said, I think they said this happened on a Friday. Yeah, guys, they were crowded at each other, fighting each other, like over a piece of steak at a at a buffet. 
<laughs> Somebody said, Trey said, so we fighting over Golden Corral. And this is my, I could understand the fight if it was a Golden Corral down south. Because me and you talked about this. Them Golden Corrals in the south hit different. It ain't the same Golden Corral. But y'all up here fighting over a well, getting your steak first. It's a buffet. They're going to keep coming. They're well, going to keep coming. Apparently the restaurant might have ran out of steak. But I don't understand why you guys are fighting each other if the restaurant ran out of steak. Not like me beating you up is not going to make the company have more steak. No. I was talking to my friends about this. I'm like, this is kind of crazy. And I was like, they probably lost so much money because like, these people aren't even paying the bill. They were like, oh, no. If you, when you go to places like this, you pay before you eat. So you mean to tell me you, <laughs> you paid money and then you went and fought somebody. So you probably even got beat up after you paid your money to be there. That is insane. And I'm taking food to go because I already paid for my shit. Wrap it up. Wrap it up or give me a refund. I don't care what just happened in here because I done paid for my food. Just give me my refund. Huh? Could you imagine being in the line? You just pay and obviously you're hungry and then you walk into the dining room and everybody's throwing chairs. It's like, what? what is happening here? <laughs> you know me. I'll be sitting somewhere safe off in the corner, but I'll be watching all you know, like, look at this shit. Y'all, I'm gonna, I'll be in the background, like calling out response. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all. <laughs> no, for me, like I stuff like that, I like it more so. Like if I can see how this is, I can see it on TV, and I can be like, wow, that's crazy. I don't trust being in places where people fighting them because like people pull out guns and stuff like that, and I'm good. Also, um, somebody just said it. Shakima just said that. Well, Miss Cyrus too said no arrest. Nobody's been arrested by this. And the crazy part about it, people are literally on the news like, yeah, there. This is what I did. What's up? Going to jail? Like, how are they? This is like capital riots all over again. Like, why is nobody going to jail? We, and you're bragging. They said, they said, my bad. It is what it is. We we apologize to each other. Let's call it even. The one guy was on there. He was like, yeah, me and my brothers got into it, but we had like little little to no damages or whatever. I had a scratch. My brother had a scratch. It's in the third. And then they showed the guy on TV with a camera, I mean, with a table, throwing the table. It's like, take him to jail. But like, why? <laughs> Wait, An Angela9438, she said, child, Golden Corral here ain't no joke in Arkansas. I've seen people argue over a citizen's discount. I'm going to get back to Golden Corral really quick, um, but citizen's discount, senior, senior discount, AARP, stop sending me emails talking about, uh, I don't I can't hear you now, Dex. I can hear you. You can't hear me? Okay. All right, now I hear you. I, You've been getting them? Yes. So I'm like, Remember at work, a couple months ago, I worked on this campaign with ARP. Like, I did a campaign with them, and I'm like, oh, maybe this is why. But now I'm like, that was a year ago. Why am I still getting stuff? And I didn't sign up for anything. Like, I'm like, hmm. I never signed up for nothing. And Shakima said, I'm old. We old. I'll take it. I am. I'm, the disrespect that I'm having, don't be soliciting me if I can I'm serious about a discount. So... Why are you throwing this in my face and I can't even use it? So I think I'm going to have to get on my, get on the call. I want to speak to a manager. <laughs> off of your list. <laughs> now, I work in media. <laughs> Did you know, you're messing with the wrong one. <laughs> but honestly, today, so... Iron well, ironically, because that's usually the uh, the Chick-fil-A I'll go to. So when I saw that uh, story about Golden Corral on the news, I said, see, and y'all keep that shit over at the uh, Golden Corral because Chick-fil-A is right next door and that's God's country. And they don't want none of that foolishness over in Chick-fil-A. It is. Yes, it's right next door. And I know that because today um, I... After my workout, I did my routine, stopped at Chick-fil-A. Oh. And I think it's something in the air up there. I think there's something in the air that causes aggression. There? Well, now I have a question, though. Do, do you know, is Sonic still there? I haven't seen a Sonic. I think they closed uh, most of the Sonics down in this area. Yeah, there was a there was Golden Crowd there. There was a I think they got rid of Sonic for Chick Fil A. Now that I think about it. Yeah, I'm sure, and they're good. They needed to because Chick Fil A is always better. But 
today I'm in line and it wasn't like really a line, but I'm one of those people who tries to follow the rules. So I'll walk around, I go around the designated like line where they have the, uh, you know, the arrows directing traffic. Usually there's somebody out there, but there wasn't somebody there. But because I go there so often, I know, you know, the flow of things. So I'm in line, minding my business, trying to be a good citizen, wait. This lady in her little red van gonna pull right up in front. I said, all right, let me pull up. So I got into the line next to her, beeped a horn, rolled the window down. She had her babies in the background. She said, excuse me? I said, yes, just to let you know, there's a line. And you just cut the line. You so, I, yeah. I said, there's a line and you just cut it. I said, next time you really probably should pay attention to things because it pops off in the Chick-fil-A line and you will probably get cussed out. So I'm just letting you know this right now. She goes, well, where was the line? You can't read? I was like, there were signs right outside, right up front, telling you how to enter the Chick-fil-A drive through line. And as she's looking at me and looks like she had an attitude or something, and I said, okay, have a good day. Here she go, trying to get my attention again. I looked at her, rolled that window. <laughs> she beeped the horn. I gave her the hand. I'm done with you. <laughs> yeah, so me, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I'm telling these people in this country are just too violent for me. I don't, mm -hmm. I just don't say anything to any of these people anymore. I like, it's, it's been difficult because like when I see stupid stuff, I really like to call it out. But now I'm trying to practice. Mm -hmm. like, I just don't, I don't like anything that I perceive as stupid. So like, I'm like, uh -huh. I tried to do this thing now where I'm like, don't bring stupid stuff around me. I can't, I can't tolerate it. Cause then I get frustrated. Mm -hmm. And if I can't handle it on like, personal levels i can't handle it when it gets outside and then i'm gonna yeah i just i'm trying not to do that and marjane that's correct it was a karen so that's another thing you've always got to size up your your opponent in the moment like i felt like little karen you don't want to get cussed out we're in, we're in the black lives matter movement don't don't do this but so much but things like this not the chick-fil-a they don't come to southwest philadelphia because they know better I've been seeing niggas do the the bullying shit in Southwest in Southwest at the Wendy's. I'm like, you can have it. Go and get right in front of me, sir. Cause I'm definitely not gonna lose my motherfucking life for no for no for no spicy chicken sandwich from the Wendy's. Now I will say to you the other day, like I was driving to work <laughs> and this car like was just so dumb and I just and, and it drives me insane when cars are dumb and they drive dumb because you, you could you could kill somebody and they never put a signal on so I'm like waiting for them to get over and I finally able, were able to get over and like I didn't blow my horn I didn't curse him out nothing like that even though I wanted to when I pulled up it was this old man and I was like I could have cussed him out he wasn't going <laughs> to me out <laughs> I was more upset. I was upset with them even more because, like, I really could have went off on you, and nothing would have happened. But like, you know, these young people or whatever, like, you just can't do nothing to these people because you just never know. But oh, uh -huh. y'all be driving dumb. We can cut y'all out. Definitely can. But here's the thing: you got to do it in a nice way. I think that's why the girl and she had an attitude with me. I don't think she was expecting this black girl to get her together today because I was very nice. I wasn't aggressive or abrasive when I talk to you, but you're going to know about yourself today. Do it again and see what I'm like. I was nice today, but I've seen it go down in the Chick-fil-A line. The one where you kind of area used to live in. One time I was there, they really had to have the cops pull up to control the drive-thru. So Miss Karen, I'm, I'm telling you from experience how ish can go in the that's God's country, but it goes down. I don't know what's going on in Chick Fil A, but it it listen. It, it it's like a spiritual connection when you bite into that little sandwich, or if you get that salad, it, it's spiritual. I, I, I to be honest, I can only go to Chick Fil A to get ice now. I haven't eaten Chick Fil A in a while. Maybe yeah, I'm there like. Oh, God, I'm there like once a damn week. But my thing is usually the salad. And it's just it's just easy and it's good. I cannot believe I'm one of those people who buy salads from a fast food restaurant. Never thought that I would. But Chick-fil-A is different. Do you get, do you get a Diet Coke with it? No. When I no, used to, you know. 
they their go to their go to item was like a double something. I want a Big Mac. I want a double the double big and tasty. Remember big and tasty? Remember those? I, I called them big and nasties because they were disgusting. <laughs> Those. And I used to have this thing where I would never eat the uh, quarter pounders. I would never eat that meat because the meat just felt too big for me. Like just I was inappropriate to eat that. Like patties are supposed to be flat. Like it, they're not supposed to be. Okay. But they would. Well, all I, don't, I like me a big patty. I'm just saying. I I don't do McDonald's. I like a lot of meat. Okay. I know you don't disagree. <laughs> <laughs> but I was. And would just like that, and they would always order a diet coke to drink. And it's just like I'm not sure what you think this diet coke is doing for you, but it's doing. If that. you if you ordering a diet coke in the dry in the fast food restaurant, you're gonna if you're not there yet, you're on your way to my 600 pound life. <laughs> it's happening because <laughs> this diet coke, I never understood that. What are you doing? Like what what is happening here? I guess like I get my calories from the food, which you will. <laughs> and you gonna get death from that shit that they put in that Diet Coke. Get the regular. Don't be going to no fast food restaurants, except it's uh, Chick-fil-A. Don't be going to no fast food restaurants talk about, I'm watching my figure, cause, so I'm going to get this. The, oh, go that, home. Oh, they get a little clean meal. You can. That, but that's different. I don't consider that. And Chipotle, you know, it's ain't no drive throughs They say, get your lazy fat ass in here and walk. You're going you gonna to burn some of these calories you come in here. And I'm with it. <laughs> uh, also before um i gotta do uh i haven't been doing on my my nebulizer regularly i gotta get back to it also we wanted to say um while we were out rest in peace to regina king's son um ian alexander he uh unfortunately lost well, lost his life due to suicide and it's um who was the girl uh, Ch Chesley Christ. She was a um, a 30 year old. She was a former Miss USA, I believe, or Miss America. A host for Extra in media. Um, was a rising star, about to be like one of the newest media mavens, and she lost her life um, by suicide. 30 years old, and just some of the details. She lived alone. Um. um was going through issues at work um, and other things that was struggling with her sexuality, very religious. So, but looking at her life, people would have just assumed everything was amazing. I mean, the same kind of with Regina King's son, like Regina King's your mother, like you're good. You grew up like around the life, but Oh yes. And she was a lawyer. Thank you so much. Um, EC McLean 40. So I just want to check in on your strong people. Check in on your, just check in, please, because I don't know, mental health is, it's very real, and I know I've been going back and forth reading, like, some of the stuff, and I feel like when it comes to, there's still a lot of stigma around it, and a lot of people, especially those strong people, um, they're so used to being the one in support and having it together, that it can be very um, kind of like embarrassing and kind of shameful. And you don't want to drop your pride to, to sit there and open up and tell your story to people. But I just want to let people know there's nothing, absolutely nothing that you're going through that no one else has been through. It's going, it's going to be okay. This too shall pass. And I just feel so bad when people just don't, don't have that, the, I guess, the spirit or the wherewithal to be like, to know that there's going to be, this is just temporary. It's not always going to be like that. So just putting out positive vibes in the universe. If anybody is struggling with anything, just know if any, even if you just find solace in knowing you're not alone, hopefully that will just be enough. But talk to somebody. It's okay talk to somebody or, and use the um, suicide prevention hotlines. Like there's so many um, options out there. And sometimes it is a bit easier to tell your problems to a stranger rather than somebody that you know or in your circle. So just anybody struggling out there, there are resources. There are. Please use them. Just know, just getting here to life. Most people don't even realize how, how lucky we are to make it 
to life itself. Like the journey to get here, you are here for a reason. You have a purpose. So just just know that. Just know that. And that's it. Anything you wanted to say on the decks? No. I don't really get okay. the conversation. Like I don't it's not really my kind of conversation. I mean I I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> I feel terrible. I feel, why did you say that? Why did you say you have a thing to say? Now I'm laughing. No, my God. <laughs> Sorry. No, I don't have anything to add. And I agree with what you said. I agree with what you said. I definitely think that there's help out there. Um, okay, we're going to stop. Next story. <laughs> <laughs> but I get Next it. story. I agree with you. I, I okay, agree. next story. <laughs> All right. So, first day of... Um, <laughs> of can I just say something? The reason why, like, it's so I you sent me this thing earlier today, and it was about black men and mental health, and like they used examples of Will Smith, Kanye West, and Tyrese, right? And they were like, uh -huh. and obviously I, I do mental health very serious. I think it's definitely something that we should all be like focused on and paying attention to, but like, like I don't like when people. I'm like here in headlights, headlights right now. Just like you know. to weaponize mental health. And like, they try to make other people feel bad because they don't understand somebody else's struggle or something like that. But like, mm -hmm. Reese and Kanye West and Will Smith, I just want to be very clear, like, when they were expressing their mental, their quote unquote mental health issues, like they were mm -hmm. doing publicly to the world. So it's like, when we say check on your strong friends, that's me or that's Latoya calling someone, making sure they're okay. That's a mm -hmm. member, somebody watching this, calling their friend or whatever. A person, who is a public figure and they're speaking publicly and tweeting and all <laughs> that's not really our responsibility to, to be checking on them like yes we should be kind well, yeah no yeah we should be kind to people and stuff like that but like don't try to make that the reason why black men don't open up and all that kind of stuff like that because kind because uh, people laughing at kanye was yeah everybody but people laughing at kanye was I don't think that's going to have no effect on people checking on me. I really don't. Like, I feel like people laughing at Kanye West because Kanye West is making, he's making it like an antic. Like, it's like, a, it's like mm -hmm. entertaining the way he does it. And like, sure, there may be something wrong there, but like, just the way that he does it, it's just kind of like, your people need to check on you. I have no yeah. ability for that at all, whatever. I don't necessarily laugh at Kanye West, but I think it's silly. yeah. Well, I mean, we're not going to act like some of the stuff. We know a lot of these people, and this is the difference between a Kanye West and a uh, a Chiselle Chris. Like, she was somebody just very private. Because people who tend to are really going through it, you cover it. You you're the you're you're the master at it of presenting as if everything is okay. I think with them, it's a little bit. Different, not all of them, because mental health overall, yes, it's very, it's a real thing, and it shouldn't be taken lightly. But it's one of those things like them where you're constantly putting things on display. Like, are you really doing this because of the mental illness? Or are you doing it because you want attention? Like, what's going on? And you're not telling us, and that's the thing. Like, you're getting on here and you're just doing these random sporadic things, but you're not telling us this is the issue. And at, and at some point in time, like, I'm, there'll be times I might not be on my medicine, I might be off of it, I might be in adjustments, but sometimes I just feel like when you're going through one of those breaks, just kind of stay off of the internet. Just, just, like, just stay off of it. I don't feel like it's a, the internet's business, like, that you're deep. It's not. Because mm -hmm. there's not many people on the internet that are going to be able to help you, like, your friends and your family, like, talk to them. And then I do think if people are dealing with, they're doing something, mm -hmm. family, it is their responsibility, I think, to reach out to them and try to see if they're okay, too. Yeah, no, 100%. As a, as a person looking at a public figure, we really can't do anything. But it just at least be, be okay. Like, be calm. Like, don't always be sitting there waiting to just troll and dig at somebody. Because you never know, like, what this person is going through. And I know we all love going in and trolling until Andrew Cobb will kick us off. But even though I love trolling Andrew, but what have we, if Andrew came out and said, guys, guys, I would be like, okay, but with Andrew, to me, he a little different because you're not going to sit here, Bathhouse Betty, be doing Bathhouse Betty on the side. And then you want to come for people's, uh, 
transgender children. That's where I crossed the line with him. But see, I think also mental health is one of those things that you use against other people. So like with someone yeah. like when he gets in situations where there's scrutiny and stuff like that, it's like, well, I have a mental situation that I'm trying to deal with. And then it gets to a point where it's just like, oh, well, I guess we can't say anything about him. He can do whatever he wants to do. But like we mm -hmm. can't because he's claiming that he has a mental issue now. Yeah. Who, my, Andrew is? He started talking about I'm, I'm mental? Well, I don't know. I'm blocked. I can't see what he does. But I'm just... <laughs> that three that people do. Like, that's what they... That's what they're starting to do now. Like, the one the one girl who got fired from the Vanderpump show, she's starting to kind of use that same thing. And it's just like, no, you okay. know, racist stuff. And that's what it yeah. is. Yeah. Speaking of that, and thank you for that wonderful segue of firings, because there have been some recent firings in the world of television. Um, <laughs> this segment is called You Fired. Um, <laughs> there was a, <laughs> that's your guy. <laughs> there was a recent, um, so I watched 90 Day Fiance. I don't know if you've heard of the show, but it's basically like people um, finding love with people outside of the country. What'd you say? I've heard of it from you. Yes, I love it. It's one of my favorites. So there's this one couple on there. This guy's from the States. The girl, um, she's from, I want to say Ukraine or something like that, or like Eastern Europe somewhere. Well, she's a little person. Um, and it's been actually nice watching their stories. Can you say until, that? Huh? Can you say that? What, a little person? That's what they like to be called. Yes, they don't, you can't, that, that's what they have chosen for the time being, 10 years from now, I don't know, it'll be something else, because you know, well, the world. we're in that struggle too. One minute it's Negro, one minute it's it's, it's Black, one minute it's African American. Like, okay, so what? I got you. What are we doing in this 10 years, yeah. in this decade? <laughs> <laughs> but for now, they like to be called little people and that we're going to give them their respect. But um, I was really like enjoying the story. You kind of felt bad because the guy, you could tell he really wasn't feeling her like that, like as much as he thought he was and he was stringing her along. So you felt bad. And then fast forward to, I think the news broke last week or earlier this week, she's going to be um let go and they're eventually going to cut her parts out of the show because somebody said, I guess old Facebook post where she was just using the n-word left and right she was using n-word so comfortably like girl that you don't even use that with that it doesn't even make sense why do you feel the need to 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 do this but and here go me my black ass i'm counting did she say because you know how they um they'll do the asterisks over the explicives i'm sitting here well did she re do it with the a or the er <laughs> <laughs> After reading them, I'm like, okay, it's an A. So maybe she thought she was being cool, but no, because absolutely not. It just doesn't make sense. Stop it. So they got rid of her. And then on Housewives of Salt Lake City, they had a new character on this season. Her name was Jenny Nugent. Um, she got let go for her recent racist post. And that you know what who actually showed me the story first. What was her comparison of black people to? And then other people she just ripped apart. Her post was it was like a little white girl and it was like asking her to apologize for slavery is like asking her, and it was another one, like like a Jewish girl, to apologize for um for the Holocaust. And it's just like what <laughs> like that is insane and then it was like um if you don't want to get shot by the police officers don't don't disrupt them or something like that it was just it was just, it was a lot of anti-black stuff and then there was oh, a lot of it a lot of this stuff ha happened during the riots and stuff like that like the george floyd riots or george Floyd protests i'm sorry a lot of this mm -hmm. stuff and she was saying that it was her social media manager that put that stuff up. And it's like, and then she's like, the posts have been deleted. But we're in 2022 right now. These posts were made in 2020. Your heart didn't change that fast. Like, this is how you feel. Like, you are nope. that person. So, like, they fired her from the show and they were just like, you know, well, we got to do better when it comes to, to ca casting and stuff like that. I do want mm -hmm. Because her season is over. So I do wonder how she made it through an entire season of the show and nobody found these tweets until the show was over. Like that, to me, that seems a little bizarre, especially the way the housewife people are. Like they really look yeah. 
all of your business. Like, like I remember the one girl. I can't think of her name. But one of the girls on there, she she um. One of the girls on another show, she found out that a housewife used a surrogate and brought it to the show. You mean to tell me people are finding out public, I mean, um, um, private medical information, but they can't find out what somebody wrote on their Facebook a year ago? I find that hard to believe. Like somebody. This is the Thank you. These companies, they're trying to say that the companies who, um, a lot of production companies will skip out because there are companies who do offer up that service to go through it. I think if you're doing reality TV, it's very important to flip the bill for something like this. Shit, give me the money because I love scrolling. And, and you know another our old coworker Angelica. She another one. She gonna go. She ain't gonna go all the way back to the beginning <laughs> to find the deed. So flip the bill. Stop it. Like this stuff wasn't old. Is like the biggest point of it. Like this was just yeah. twenty. And I I'm a. 2022 now i guess the girl was hired in 2021 maybe even hired in 2020 how do y'all probably into 2020 yeah but but i mean 2020 is where we are now and their show yeah important so that means you were either fired i mean you either hired when you were posting this stuff or like while you were filming the show do you know what i'm saying like like how did y'all not catch that Child, I, I don't know, but she out of here. This is one instance where Bravo said, we ain't waiting around for you. Now, would that be Deuces, a girl? Another person that's getting fired? Huh? You have another person? Let me see. One second. I know something. Something else. But one thing, real quick, with Jenny Nugent, she said she made a thing to her followers. Thank you so much for those who have supported me, and I'm going to tell my side of the story. Bitch, we don't know you. We don't we don't know you. We don't care. A hundred percent new to the the show. Like I'll Yes, brand new season. Yep. Okay, so who else? Child I just saw something spread. Go ahead. Goldberg is the person that I was gonna bring up. So yesterday on the view they were talking about how there are certain books. I forgot the name of the book, but there's a book that explains the Holocaust and it's like a chil I think it's a children's book from how I Mouse, I think it's called. I think it's called Mouse. And there Okay. Yes, I did hear them talking about that to pull that book and there's To Kill a Mockingbird they say the n-word mm -hmm. To Kill a Mockingbird they're looking to pull that too when people are complaining that like you're, you're trying to erase literature with the you know whatever and Whoopi Goldberg took that and she said you know like the Holocaust was not a race issue it was just white people doing stuff to white people and it was like it was basically people were being mean and like this shit was a human rights type of issue or whatever and it wasn't race related because it was white on white and um, people are calling for Whoopi Goldberg to be fired. She since issued out an apology and said, like, you know, like, I I did think it was a horrible thing, but I just didn't base it on race because these people were the same race. And people are pissed about it, and they are begging ABC to fire Whoopi Goldberg. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird, too, though, because, like, when she said it, the other girls on the show immediately tried to, like, muse. Muse? I thought it was called muse. Muse. The muse. Okay. Immediately start to try to, like, bring her back Help her out. yeah girl come back they tried like they all like were like except sunny she was very quiet she didn't say a word <laughs> listen this is why i love sunny because and even a lot of times how she deals with whoopi because she will try to bail whoopi out a lot hmm? i guess she said i'm done with this shit go ahead <laughs> so the thing is like she said it, and then i think joy behar was like no she's like well it is a word and then she whipped it over just kind of went off no it's not and then, she, and then, then she said, okay, whatever. And then she just kept going with it. And like, she was, I get the point that she was trying to make that it wasn't, yes. it's, like, it's like white on white. So you can't really use race or whatever. But like, they were doing this to people because of, I guess not the color of their skin, but like what yeah. nationality and stuff like that. And then look, if people want to say, the people who were oppressed by something and they want to say, this was racist to us, like, mm -hmm. I thought we should want to take that away from them. Like I wouldn't want somebody to take yeah. Like, man, if I feel like something is racist, then I, it's racist. Like, that's just what it is. Yeah, you can't take that from me. And, and, this is, and this is how crazy it got on, on The View. You know how when you're watching the Oscars and they start playing the wrap it up music? They literally start playing the music while she was talking. She wouldn't stop. <laughs> like, she kept going. <laughs> she knew she was in a hole and she's trying to get herself out of it. But, like, just stop. Could have just stopped. It's a, it, sometimes it's best not to make your point. Like, yes, you had a point, but maybe just, like, leave it alone. And, like, she did not. Yeah, and I think she wasn't knowledgeable enough 
on like because i don't know i know being jewish is a religion but i don't know if they look at themselves as like their own race well, of people so they i guess they do like it's like stop it it's like leave just leave it alone if this if this if if you don't feel like it's a race issue then don't then that's fine but it's literally this yeah. that like that they people do to us like when black mm -hmm. Like with the with, with the George Floyd thing, there are people who would be like, "That's not a race issue. George did something bad, and the cop did X, Y, Z, and and yeah. color his skin." If we feel like it is, you gotta let us have that because at the end of the day, somebody who looks like me was killed, and it was yeah. a person of a different race. And if we want to say that that's a race thing, it's not pulling a race card. It's literally this is what we think, and this is how we feel. Thank you. And at the end of the day, these people were um violated against and murdered for being jewish it, it, like it, like from what i saw with it it didn't seem like she was trying to take away from what happened like she, yes I know. Mm -hmm. but she was taken away from their feelings on it and you can't do this yeah you definitely can you should you gotta tiptoe around stuff like that and if you don't really know the proper words to say sometimes it's just wait most of them look at jewish as being a race that's what i thought too but i'm not super knowledgeable on it but again if it's some when it's something so personal and i know the people were saying as a black woman you should understand which you you kind of should at the end of the day you're a member of an a, a oppressed um faction of people so are the Jews to an extent. So I just, I mean, if you really look at them, that their oppression, whoo, whoo. Damn there, since the beginning of time, they've been trying to sur survive. Um, so yeah, you, you, you got and have had people hate against them for whatever reasons. You can't be careful, Whoopi, please. Damn. So do you think they're going to get rid of her? I don't know, because Whoopi almost seems untouchable to me. So it's just kind of like, yeah. first to see how they do this. And it, now I will say this, though. Like, I'm not saying that anti-Semitism doesn't exist, because it, it, it does. does. But, like, I have people in my, like, life that are Jewish, and they, it's, it's kind of weird sometimes when they kind of talk about it, because they're like, people are really discriminatory towards us and like nothing ever happens to them. Like if you do this to any other group, like there's hell to pay. If you do that to us, like nothing happens. And I never really necessarily agreed with that because I never saw it, but like mm -hmm. a good example of it. And then Nick Cannon situation is a good example of it because he said what he said and then they turned around and rewarded him with shows and stuff like that. And to me- Well, he did. He They didn't at first, let's be honest. They yanked a lot of stuff from Nick Cannon in that moment. Another thing- I'm not going to discuss that on here. This is something for uh, off of this because, you know, my stuff, I'm a little different when it comes to things. I really don't even agree that they took a lot of stuff from him. Like, yeah, you said, like, we're going to pull the plug on this and stop doing this and stop doing that. This stuff lasted maybe three, three, four months, <laughs> and he's been yeah. back with a show now. So it's kind of like it's like a slap in the on the wrist. And if there was somebody personally that said something about black people and they did this for them and they're on the show on on Fox and all this stuff like this, that's a problem for me. Like yeah, so it's Ron Diva. I'm sorry, Ron Diva says she did apologize and made statements. So I don't. Yeah, they may not fire her. My aunt Kia Smack said she didn't know until someone had explained to her. Um, that was Jewish and what it means. So I, I don't. I don't know. Honestly, I, I'm I'm thankful the conversation did happen because there are a lot of people. Whoopi Goldberg thinks this. You know how many other people think the same damn thing. Oh, I so like it. It sucks that it had to happen in that way, but at least it kind of starts the conversation and kind of clears things up. So I and I would hope she. Huh? And she acknowledged it because a lot of times, like, the conversation will happen and if the people don't acknowledge it, it goes well. And I don't care that Nick Cannon had conversation with Jewish leaders. We can't, like... Okay. Let me just say this. That's what I'm saying. You might not want to get into it, but... Because here's the thing. This is where I'm on the line with certain things because a lot of people will get in their feelings about things because you don't know it but if i'm telling you something that's fact and this actually happened in history 
No, I don't know. Just because you don't like the message does not mean what the message is invalid. Outside of that, though, like, I am i don't even get into that kind of thing of it. I get it mm -hmm. with Nick Cannon. He said something that people found offensive. They thought it was wrong. They fired him from the show. He's done. Mm -hmm. My issue is that people are like, he met with leaders and this, that, and the third. So, and he's learned his lesson. Yeah. That to me, that's BS because I'm not taking it that same way. Because if someone said yeah. somebody that was black or they talked about black history that way, I don't care if you meet with Al Sharpton every single day. I don't care. You can meet with Al Sharpton, you can be with Ben Crump and Portia Williams. I do not care. You're done. I don't want to see you on my TV three months from now. And we can't, and I just don't think that's cra To me, it's crazy that we're allowing Nick Cannon to do that. Like, it's just kind of like. Okay. I feel you. I feel your perspective. But let me be clear if any of those three people are on your team, you went just <laughs> throwing the towel. <laughs> just throwing the towel because mm -mm. mm -mm. <laughs> you probably did that. What, what did you say? You did that shit. <laughs> Done with it. Um, but you had met, you said something that I wanted to There's something on. else that I wanted to jump into. I don't know if we have time though. No, we got time. We got, let me see. Bath and Body Works. Yeah, we got a little bit of time. Bath and Body Works. They really... Yeah. Thank you, Dexter. We're here. We're here. It's Black History. I, I, Continue. I, I, so powerful. <laughs> so powerful. <laughs> Go ahead. It's a new line today of um, it's in honor of Black History Month. So their candles and their body care, they're wrapped in like um, Black or African inspired like looks and stuff like that. And there's some different scents like coconut sandalwood and all that kind of stuff like that. And they have it on display. They have people like buying it and stuff like that. They they really want to give back to the black community. So then I'm like, I'm on the fence about it. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it. But then yeah. at the comments on the Bath and Body Works page, people are not happy about it. <laughs> they said this is performative. They're saying like, were any of these things designed by black artists? Like, and then they were saying like, one of the comments that really like kind of took me, I was like, oh, I don't know, how, that's weird is they said that these are the same $10 candles that you guys put on sale during the holidays that people decided to buy and not buy from black businesses. So you guys are taking away from black businesses and all that stuff like that too. And like, I'm really on the fence with this. I don't know how I feel about it. Like I, a part of me does feel like it's pandering, but then another part of me yeah. aren't doing anything. Like, wouldn't we, would we, like, how would we feel about that? And I don't Thank know you. If, how I feel about them just donating money. Maybe, if they donated the proceeds of this stuff to like a black organization or something like that. Which they are. I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, I was reading something. So they did. Well, you know what? Maybe they not. They did. They did say that they are working with the Urban League and somebody else. But the five hundred thousand dollars now. I would agree because, you know, they have that white barn. Uh, mm -hmm. Lumping. Is that actual actually a Bath and Body Works brand, or do is it somebody else's brand that they sell there? I think it's. I, I'm assuming that they may have purchased them because they're in the stores. Like they sell that as a Bath and Body Works product, but they call it okay. Kind of like how Victoria's Secret has pink. It's all still the same. They just have a different name for it because of the type of candles they are. From okay. All right. So, yes, I do believe they could have partnered maybe with a couple of, like, do the real work. But we know how these corporations work, so we're not going to do that. But to do the real work, there are so many candles. is a hot thing right now, especially in the African-American community. You couldn't find somebody to give them a leg up or at least, like, bring their brand into your store to feature, to create this partnership. So I probably would have enjoyed, I would have liked that. But at the end of the day, I kind of look at it like th they're trying. They might not know all of the things, the exact things to do, but they are trying. And sometimes I feel like with us Black people, like, damn, you're kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't. So I just... I don't know. I feel like some people in the comments just got way too much in their feelings about it and instead talk to people. And they did tell you in that post to go to our stories to get more information. And in the stories, they were there. Like, there were black... I kind of hate that they did this. <laughs> Put the one black girl up there. Yeah, we loved it! <laughs> 
No, but but you know, I will say though, with Bath and Body Works though, during what is it Pride Month or Pride Week, whatever it is. That yeah, pri yeah, I think it's Pride. I think Pride Month. They might got a whole month now. They do have a line. I, I don't know if they paint the display this big, but they do have some Pride items. I yeah, sort of like that approach more with this. Like, I don't know if I want you guys to do a big dis reveal. Look at what we're doing. Like, if do the display, but I don't feel as though you kind of need to do the social media post about it because it's like, look what we're doing. We're team black. We have a couple of like items, like, you know, like we have these items that have come out or whatever, and we're featuring them for Black History Month the same way that mm -hmm. Pride Month. Like, I think that's fair. Your display in February should be your freaking Valentine's Day candles. That's the thing in February. So well, you know they're going to do that too. They ain't missing no money. <laughs> they're going to do that too. And the, <laughs> does come across a little performative to me like yeah I liked it because it's like it's a look at me kind of situation yeah just so we have this you come in the store yeah. you see what we have versus mm -hmm. if i'll pass this month without seeing this display like <laughs> put the blacks right to the front so they everybody can see it when they walk in <laughs> yeah i don't know it's just then, i feel then, like something go ahead about it so i would like to know like if, if, if it doesn't sell if you did this genuinely like you had really good intentions of doing this and it doesn't sell well are you going to do it again next year or is it just like it was a money grab because if it's just a money grab we won't see it next year and we'll know by next year and then by next year if y'all don't come with the same heat then we can we can really discuss it because you've shown your true colors this is a money grab and a money grab on only don't do this so, but yeah, I mean, I looked at it like at least they, they, they were trying, they were trying the best of their ability. I would have liked if they had said the art inspiration was, it was inspired by, but you couldn't find a black artist to actually create this for you. And that could have been, okay, I get it. Like, like we have a certain standard for candles and people's candles that they make on their own don't reach the standard. Okay, that's fine. But the artwork, that like you couldn't feature a black person or a black artist to do the artwork. I mean, even get it. Thank you. <laughs> so, and if they were, you know they would have led with that. But you didn't. Mm -hmm. So you just, and again, we don't know who's in these boardrooms. And if you're part of corporate America nine times out of ten, you, you know who's in the boardroom. I think that was a good idea. Like, you thought that yeah. you eat it up. You thought you did something. Yep, and this is why companies, instead of just trying to see I'm part of the crew, being really part of the crew is hiring people who look like these uh, things you're trying to push, who can tell you, yeah, that probably wasn't the best look to do it in that way. Or you sit there, and well, you know, being black in the boardroom, a lot of times you can throw shit out there and... And we ain't listening to you. We gonna go with this. All right, now get out there and get your motherfucking yo, your face cracked. And then, then when I tell you, I told you so, you'll listen to me next time. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> yeah, so um, Ali, Ali Kipper said they weren't trying to bring um, one of us in. And Bath and Body Works, Ali Kipper want to know. The people want to know. Well, were we at the table or no? What's up? Ali Kipper, first of all, I just want to shout him out again because... This man has me rolling probably every single day with the stuff that he posts, his memes. It he's a he's another hilarious person. So Ali Kepper, thanks for um providing the laughs for me throughout the day, my silly ass. Because you know I'd be home lonely, Nene voice. <laughs> uh, Shakima said, and sometimes sometimes it's the wrong blacks. At yes. But you know, but you know what though, we know that too, and we've worked with enough people to know that there are certain black people that are just trying to make you feel comfortable, and you know that, like, and other black people can tell you that, and I, I can't speak for anybody else, but you know when a person is just being a yes man to you because they're just happy to be here, you know that. They think they got to see that to tell me you really don't. Because guess what? As soon as some shit, you so eager to kiss ass and lick boots and all this other shit. When the ship go down, who you think they going to throw under that uh, t under that fucking bus? I think the, the people who are, I don't want to say the white people, but the white people that are there, they know that too. You know what type of black person you have there. And you have one. And 
be the one that goes along to goes along to get along. And you're mm -hmm. very aware with that, and you're very comfortable with it. What you need to get is somebody who you're who you're not always comfortable with what they say. But you thank you. Constructive criticism and constructive dialogue. That's what you need. Yeah. And how are you going to grow as a company if you're not having people who are really going to give you that real perspective? Ain't broke, don't fix it. You know how that goes. Mm -hmm. Corporate America. Y'all wonder why niggas is leaving these jobs. First of all, leaving the jobs. I wanted to put something out there that probably a couple of episodes ago that the news has been portraying lately. If you got a surgery and you went to work the very next day at your at, to your job because you you just love what you do so much. You love these kids. And I got to read these books to them. Don't be putting this on my five o'clock news acting like this is supposed to be a great story for me. Because I don't need my job looking at me while Sarah had brain surgery and the next day was at work because she loves her job. Well, that's my fucking Sarah. I hope Sarah is getting a great, a great uh, uh, bonuses, a great salary. Because <laughs> let me tell you, if I cut my damn finger in half. I'm going to the hospital and I'm going to get stitched up and I won't be at work the next time. I think that's another thing, you know, that like there's like this mindset that people are like pushing out there. Like for a while now, I've kind of noticed it too, where it's just like, you should be so grateful to have a job, this, that, and the third. And it's just like yes. that you should be happy to have a job. But at the same time though, like, I should be happy living my regular life, too. Like, I have to take care of myself. Not even on a mental level, but on a my body. I got to take care of myself. Yes. I have to take care of myself on the entertainment level. Like, I have to just not be stressed out coming here every day. Like, I have, you. You have to be okay with it. And for them to, it was another story, something like that, too, where see this person and got back to work. Okay, well, that's must what you want at your damn establishment. But at the end of the day, it should be about the employees first. Even if Carol said, nah, I can make it in tomorrow, somebody should have said, no, Carol, sit home and take care of yourself. Don't plaster this on the six o'clock news like, look at Carol. She's a real hero. That's amazing. Carol loves her job, but that ain't going to be the expectation of all of us out out here yeah because please carol didn't make it through that surgery you would have had somebody else doing her job like somebody else is gonna have to step up and do it thank you y'all take y'all time don't let these don't let these media get you don't let this new take y'all time it's about you you first so please although it was a i guess a cool story and then i'll end on this michael rapaport mind your business what he do now and he was in, ever since his Spike Lee casted him in that movie, he thinks he has the card. Well, you know, in the beginning, he was always doing the black film. So I guess that that's I what he does. Yeah, he's done it even before Spike. But <laughs> he in a damn Rite Aid in New York City, decides to whip out his phone because there was a man in there stealing. Went in there, filled his bag up at that time. One box. He won't bother nobody. He was still not. Uh huh. No. Put his bag in there. Michael Rappaport, the security is like, because you know, if you work secure, I mean, uh, retail security guards, you're not supposed to talk to, like, touch these people if they're doing so. At the end of the day, I don't know what security is really there for. Michael pulls out his camera. This guy is just taking stuff and walking out. The guy looked at him. Grabbed his bag, walked right out the right, right aid, walked up the street. Mind your business. No, ain't no mind your business. Like, this, see, this is the thing about stealing, too. If you're going to steal, you have to know that stealing is not cute. Like, when you're doing that, you're taking somebody else. You're supposed to be trying to be sneaky with it. You cannot boldly go out there and steal from them. And yes, they can, because they've been doing it. No. And if I can't yeah, do can. it, I'm like you can't do that you can't be still like that that's ridiculous my your business you own you own this and on top of that these right eights about to go out of business uh, yeah i bet you, you want to know why go pay for your stuff and mind my business and stop minding my business you what you mad because i ain't tell you and put your order in you should have put your order. <laughs> that's terrible i hate that i hate like, we're already dealing with inflation issues, already dealing with inflation. 
people can't get stuff out of the stores and you and they're still alive. And, and look, if you want to still, still, but be sneaky about it. Like, you can't just be no. yelling. Come on. And while we're done. These Gen Zers, they done. I'm going to walk in here, collect my items that I need, and you're going to leave me alone. Insane. That is insane. But you know what, Dex? You did say if you caught somebody stealing from the Gucci, you was going to take the stuff and run back to the store. Mr. Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> Mr. Gucci. Part of that is right. Part of that is right. If I knew somebody that was stealing from the Gucci, I would take the stuff. And, and put it in my closet or sell it. <laughs> <laughs> and put it on. Shakira said, "Next, weren't you? Weren't you down at the Gucci during the protest?" I ain't telling my business. I, <laughs> I, I was waiting for them to open up. Y'all open up. <laughs> 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 yes, to be uh, clear, there is stealing is never okay. All right, you guys, is it really worth it? Because you never know. You might get that hype ass person one day, the, you know, Joe Security, who never made it as a police officer, and he's so damn hype, and he's going to grab the assailant. That that security guard that day, he said, "Oh no, they're paying for that." Michael Rappaport, and he records you, and now you're all over Instagram. So you're gonna get caught. You're gonna get solved. Oh no! He was, he came in with his push icey. It, it, Michael Michael's Michael smarter. He's wow. Cause I'm in an establishment and somebody comes in with a ski mask on. I'm leaving. I'm dropping off. Okay. I may end up stealing because I'm running out of there. If I got something in my hand, I'm kicking away. I'm out of there. <laughs> like I'm not about to stick around. And I'm damn sure about. Let me see. COVID or not, if they walk in the store with the shiesty, out. Just leave. <laughs> Here go Michael, not minding his business. Pull out the phone. Where are you going? That man walked in there with a vision and a purpose, and he ain't he ain't fold for nobody. And you want and you in his face, you don't know what he got. That, that's something somebody to walk into an establishment bold as fuck. No issues. I'm coming in to collect my stuff. Leave them alone. Yeah, I'm going I'm, to I'm mind my business with that one. Leave them alone because you don't know what the hell is going on with they got Tommy in the tuck. <laughs> you don't know. Leave them people alone. Mind your business. If you want to help, maybe say something to one of the um nope. the cashiers, possibly. If they see the ski mask, too. We're good. I'm out. And if I'm the cashier, I'm out, too. The security said, Michael, go look at the security guard. You want to, um, you ain't going to close the door? Mind your business, Michael Rappaport. Close the door so this man is in here with his gun and all of us? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mind your business. People are struggling out here. They got to eat. I saw this black queen a couple of weeks ago, ran up into some store. She was a turban queen. She had no business in that store stealing and missing. <laughs> People hurting, and it's it's desperate, desperate times. Calls with desperate measures. If you're still not of a right aid, I can go with that. You are probably hurting. When you're still not the Macy's, hmm. sis, while well, playing, walked in, started to, security came up. She pulled that mace out. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> That's not funny. That's terrible. <laughs> that is trash. I'm getting these clothes. <laughs> that is terrible. And now I don't have no money, so don't ask me. Give me the coat. And on that note, <laughs> Dexter, thank you for pulling up. Guys, thank you for always being amazing. Oh, first of all, I want to um, give some love to my hoodie is by, uh, it's T-I, well, T-W, and it's Team Weiss. So he's one of my trainers at the gym that I go to, and you can find him here, hashtag Team Weiss 215. And he's a professional boxer and an amazing trainer. 
So check him out. Check out his work. I can't wait to uh, hit up one of his fights. But I just wanted to show some support and love. He's a good guy. Isaiah, Team Weiss215. Um, and again, rest in peace to our guy, Just Ralph. Just Ralph, an amazing spirit, an amazing person. Just somebody who just brought so much joy and touched so many people's lives who never even met him. And it's just, for me, it's so sad. Like with all the shittiness and the horrible people, we see horrible news stories happen every single day. So it's like, for me, when the light leaves, it's like, damn, really? And you, they leave so early. So that was a hurt piece. But Ralph, we know, sweetie, you got us. So, you know, sit up there with the big guy. You know, this podcast is going with do something in your name. Ralph, put a word into the big guy. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we love you guys. Thank you so much for pulling up on us. And we will see you Monday, 6 o'clock. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>